How are you, man? I'm Gil Roth, and you're listening to a bonus episode of my Virtual Memories Show podcast. This is a COVID check-in episode where I record with a past guest of the Virtual Memories Show to find out how they're holding up during the pandemic. As far as how I'm doing, I'm all right. Uh, weekend went okay, but I've got this weird dread slash trepidation slash anxiety going on um, this morning. I think it's just because after I record this, I'm heading out again to, to rejoin my running group. And I haven't run with these guys since mid-March. I haven't run with anybody since mid-March. Um, but it's starting to seem like it would be safe enough here in New Jersey to get six or seven miles in with them, appropriately distance. Um, the thing is, <laughs> I have been so hardcore about not risking exposure that I'm a little concerned about the transition back to semi-normal behavior, if that makes sense. That is like all the little steps that people have been engaging in to reduce risk, but not completely eliminate it. I've eschewed all that in favor of hiding out at home, uh, not setting foot in another building besides my house, and not having in-person conversations with anyone, uh, except my wife and, of course, my dog. Um so I don't know if I'm going to screw up and miss the little stuff I should be doing. And I'm, of course, filled with dread, trepidation, and anxiety over that. But it'll be good to to see the guys. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. So let's get to today's guest. Liza Donnelly is joining me this time from Rhinebeck, New York. Liza is a New Yorker cartoonist, as well as an illustrator, commentator, speaker, um, and overall cultural observer who pioneered live drawing on the iPad. Um, I mean, she had a big career before all that, but that's a, a thing she's really focused on now. During the pandemic, she's been doing live drawing videos daily on Periscope and Instagram. In the before time, she was the resident cartoonist for CBS News, where she covered cultural and other events and would be drawing you know, during shows and they'd be instantly going up on online and social media and on TV. Um, so it's kind of a neat, neat practice to, to be in. Uh, Liza's been engaged in women's rights issues and other social causes through the UN and, and several NGOs and uses her art and activism um, and speaking to, to, well, to try to make a better world. So given uh, how we've shifted from pandemic into protests and police violence world, I figured uh, it would be really good to get her voice on. Now, as caveats go, uh, usual guest microphone stuff, uh, nobody has the recording set up I do, but I'm insane. And there's also a bird chirping in the background occasionally, which is actually kind of idyllic. Here's me and Liza. So I guess just as a, I was doing these primarily from the perspective of pandemic life, but now mm. things are even more... Um, torn asunder in all our lives. I guess just as a basic question, and you can elaborate on it, how are you dealing? How has the last couple of months been? How has the last week been? How are you coping? I'm coping well, uh, generally speaking, compared to many other people. I know that we, I, I don't know anybody who uh, has been hospitalized with, with coronavirus. Um, I, I know a few people who have had it. So uh, we're, we're healthy. We're, uh, uh, thriving, a family nearby. Uh, I've got my husband right here, so I'm, I, you know, I can hug him. I just feel very lucky. Mm -hmm. um, with the with the recent turmoil, um, again, same thing. I feel very lucky that I'm safe. But I really am. Both in both cases, I'm. Uh, well, I don't know what the word would be. Really, uh, well, unsettled and, and angry. So um, yeah. Yeah, that's a long answer to your question. <laughs> no, trust me, that's shorter than most people uh, when they try oh. to parse what they're going through and, and all this. Was there an initial um, acclimation phase for you guys? I know you live somewhat isolated mm. to begin with. You know, was there that sense of, you know, we're stuck here or we have to, to mm. change the circumstances of oh. our, our day to day? Well, yeah, I mean... Uh... Uh, we live in the country north of New York City, about 90 miles. It's beautiful, Hudson Valley. And um, that's where we raised our kids, who are now grown. Um, but I, we also have an apartment in New York City, which I spend normally um, 
almost half my time. And then I also spent a lot of time traveling. So for me, it was a big shift that way. I mean, we, as, as cartoonists, as a cartoonist, I just draw solo. Uh, I'm a freelancer, so I'm used to being alone, working alone, working remotely. So that's not a problem for me, but it, it was the missing New York terribly and missing traveling to see people in Europe and doing jobs, um, uh, live drawing, going places. I miss that a lot, but I assume it'll have be back. Been, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Have you been able to, to go back to New York? I haven't at yet. All? No, have you tried? I, no, I haven't yet. I met, I left it March 11th and I'm now beginning to, you know, think about when can I go back? Uh, so I don't yeah. know. Maybe this month it's, sometime. It's weird for us outside of the city. It's like that. Like it's just this big cloud of unknowing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I I don't go anywhere or do anything. I'll, I'll drive out to do curbside pickup of, of food, but I don't mm -hmm. travel anywhere significantly. I haven't even thought about going into the city. My friends in New York are running around, not running around. They're traveling around as best they can doing things. And there's just that sense of what would that, you know, that force field almost be like for us mm -hmm. to, to transition back toward that that place and that's the exact same day march 11th was the the day things really went off kilter for me mm -hmm. um where mm -hmm. we started just shutting everything down and not mm -hmm. going anywhere mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah it's good. i mean the, there's uh positives that in that uh i'm in my studio all the time i mean I'm, as freelancers you're always working anyway but um it's always on your mind. If you're not actually physically working, you're thinking about working, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so that's not, not new, but I'm, I'm in my studio and my studio is in, a, in an old barn, which is lovely. And then there's a beautiful space and I'm really, really lucky. Uh, but I get to be here a lot more than normally. And I'm loving that. And I'm actually getting reacquainted with, with paper. Cause I do a lot of digital in the past couple of years. I've been doing a lot of digital drawing on my iPad and uh, I'm getting reacquainted with paper and my crow quill um, so I'm having fun with that. And, um, what led to that? Mm -hmm. What uh, led to going back to paper? Oh, was well, it just a... uh, I mean, I, I've, I never fully left it because I, when I, when I uh, sell a cartoon to the New Yorker, I always do the finished drawing with pen and, and ink and paper. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I haven't fully left it, but I'm just spending more time doodling. I, I ordered uh, online. I ordered more paper. Like you can get, big sheets of paper. I actually got a new flat file, which I'm really excited about. I don't know if you guys know what that is. <laughs> the big, you know, you've seen yeah. them in art stores. They've been in an art store, the big drawers that pull out. I've always wanted one. Yeah. I, I finally got one. Um, so I have paper. Oh, you didn't that. have one before? No. Uh -uh. Oh, uh, wow. Because I, mean, I always figured, oh, sorry, go on. No, I've been organizing a lot. And and uh, yeah, you always yeah. figured as an artist, you'd have that, but not necessarily. I have a well, couple of all, all the... mm -hmm. Go ahead. Still, to me, it's the New Yorker cartoonists who live in the country. That specific niche, I figure, are the people with flat files because <laughs> that's right. the reason you, you leave New York and go to the country is so that I finally have space to put all this stuff. Yeah, so when no, I see I... Cuneo or Chardello or those guys, mm -hmm. but this is the first one for you? Yeah. When I lived in New York as a single gal on West 79th Street, I coveted flat files and really wanted to get one, but it obviously took me 40 years to get one. Yeah. But, um, also the, the, um, here's the other thing that led to the more drawing on paper is that, um, you know, I can't, the, the, uh, this live drawing thing that I've been doing for, for about five years now where I travel around and do sort of, I call it visual journalism, where I draw what I see and send it out on social immediately. I've done it for the New Yorker and CBS news and CNN. And, I, and uh, so that's been really, really fascinating and, and rewarding to do, um, I can't do that right now. So, but I do know from being on social media when I was maybe s seven years ago or so, I, I would take, before I had the iPad, I would take my phone and hold it over my hand and just record my hand drawing something silly and put it on social. And people kind of love watching artists draw, I've discovered. They love seeing the hand create something. And so I started doing that again on social media. And I, I think it was uh, a couple of weeks into the pandemic, I started doing it and I, re and I said to myself, I'm going to do this every day for, for, for my followers. Um, 
and I'm going to do it about the pandemic. So I, and I'm not going to plan ahead. I'm going to just doodle or, or I don't like that word doodle. I'm going to sort of just stream of consciousness and draw about what's going on with my brain or my life or the pandemic or what I'm thinking about in, in that world. And uh, so every day now, you know, I should have looked up, but I think I've done about 52 episodes. Um, I do them live and I, uh, I talk to the camera first and then I put it over my hand. I've got a device now that holds the phone over my hand and I just draw with the pen and the, and the ink. And sometimes I use other materials to, to show people cause they kind of, I think they're interested in materials. Um, and, uh, also just talking. And I think people kind of enjoy, they tell me they do. They enjoy the stream of consciousness drawing and talking about what's going on right now. And now, now I've pivoted big time to uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and protests and uh, things like that. So I'm just going to continue doing that. And it's on Instagram Live and Periscope. Yeah, yeah, I'll have links to those in the uh, the, the show notes hey, for the okay. episode. I was yeah. checking them out before uh, okay. before we got together. Uh-huh. Yeah, do you find it do you find it difficult talking while drawing? Sometimes, if you watch them, you'll 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 notice that you I get quiet. Uh, get quiet because yeah. I'm concentrating on the drawing. Some of the drawings are easier to do than others, but I think, you know, I think people are are enjoying the silence. They're they're enjoying the yeah. quietness of watching somebody draw, and um, mm. it's it, it's soothing. Some people tell me so, yeah. and it's not aggressive. I mean, I, I someone said to me, "Your drawings are nice, but you need to be more. You know, we need we need more. What was the word he used?" Uh, Propaganda or, or uh, no uh, opinion, yeah. more um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the word. I can't, I can't remember the word he used. But uh, so, uh, but I, and so I'm voicing that a little bit on the podcast because I think he's got a point. Uh, but I also think mm-hmm. that with so many opinions out there, um, what does mine, what does mine lend to this to the equation. I really don't know. I don't know if cartoons can change people's minds. Um, so I see this as a dialogue. It's a, it's a, it's a sharing thing. It's a, it's like, let's, it, maybe it's therapy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, anyway, trust me, mm. I'm doing this every day. It's same, same thing. I, I'm, except this doesn't involve a creative act like drawing for me, but mm. yeah. yeah. When I discovered the, the value of just sitting down and talking with people, especially creative people and how they're, they're coping. And oh, as yeah. the situation developed, I started near the end of March mm-hmm. and the, the framework we had then, as opposed to the end of May into June is very, very different, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of, again, what we knew and what we didn't know, what the waves were like of, of cases and the level of panic we had, but even chronicling that and, and getting an idea and going back to people and sort of, you know, re having a new conversation and, and seeing how they're coping and adjusting has been, a, mm, mm-hmm. I think useful to, mm-hmm. at least to me, if not to an audience, but you know, I, I'm, I'm trying. Um, now when you talk about being in the, the studio all the time, are you experiencing any of the, uh, um, time dilation every day is the same sort of thing, or is that already kind of covered within your, your freelance mentality? towards yeah. art making yeah, in the world it's, it's kind of already covered uh in that yeah. <laughs> i used to travel a lot so that i would be more uh, uh conscious of days because i'd have to be somewhere at some point but um yeah i mean for us you know what it's like saturday and sundays are very nice days but they're also work days so yeah um, um yeah but there's uh, what i what's interesting maybe this uh other people feel this too my email responses trying to get back to people has been screwed up. It's screwed up for some reason. Like I don't remember to answer people in a timely way that I used to be really good at that. I, I don't know why that is, but um, oh, I'm going to blame, yeah. I'm gonna blame the virus. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, you are not alone in that one. That's I'm funny. doing it. Other people are doing it. It's, it's a, why is one that? of those things you look like hmm. the Google, I don't know what it is. Cause we're slowing down a lot. Hmm, maybe that should it. have more time, but I, I think it's a lack of focus, mm. um, which is another, again, the acclimation we we all went through, you know, where you could and couldn't focus on different things. Yeah, that's the other thing is but, I can't read very much. I find I just last I was going to ask. I, last yeah. night, I think I read, you know, five pages in a book, um, a, a novel that I'm reading. And uh, 
that's that was big. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I just want. I just want to look at social media and uh, fall asleep that way. It's terrible. Does that help, or does it? Does it? Uh, does the social media thing fill you with outrage as it's intended to to do for most of us, or or do you oh, have a, a feed that enables uh, you to, to chill out? It doesn't f necessarily fill me with outrage, but it's uh, um, right before bed. I don't usually look at at uh, Twitter or um, Facebook as much as I'll look at fun things like uh, Instagram uh, yeah. pet, pet accounts or, <laughs> or, or TikTok. I I'm a real fan of looking at TikTok cause I love, I just, I'm, I'm just, just uh, so happy at how creative people are and how funny they are on TikTok. Uh, I don't know if you look at TikTok, but it's just, it's amazing the things that people come up with and then, and they're fun and they're upbeat. Yeah. It's an upbeat yeah. platform. So, yeah. Do you ever wonder if you would have adopted any of those modes? If you know, if you were a teenager nowadays, it would be one of those. You know, maybe I wouldn't be drawing. I would be making goofy videos and and. No, it's not know. really me, Gil. I, I uh, I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I love to dance, but I don't think I love to videotape myself dancing. I like to watch yeah. other people dance. <laughs> But I ha I am on TikTok. I have to admit, I did get an account, and I do have put a couple of drawing things on there. But uh, I haven't gotten much track. I haven't put much effort into it. Yeah. Again, it's a video is not just video. You know, there's this different audiences, different ways of formatting, and all that. I I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not able to, to read as much, have you been doing the the Netflix binging? Oh yeah. Okay. What what have you been? Uh, uh, no, uh, you're taxing my brain now. Um, we're and right now. We're watching Homecoming. We we heard about the second season. I, we started it a, a couple of months ago. Yeah, never watched it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we started a couple of months ago and sort of put it off to the side. Like, mm, not so sure. Even though Julia Roberts is great, um, but now, now you just finished the first season and it's really good. And the second season, which is brand new, is with Janelle Monae, uh, um, mm -hmm. and um, can't wait to get into that. So. Oh, we, and we discovered, I think this was during the pandemic, we discovered The Americans, which I love. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, I think that was yeah, before that's... the pandemic, but that is amazing. Um, oh, and you haven't finished it yet, have you? Wait, no, we did. We, that was, we went through oh, that did? really fast. Because, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, when we talk about those great series that actually the finale delivered, The Americans is mm -hmm. one of the few that, yeah, you you actually culminated everything and you, you delivered on that one where mm -hmm. other shows... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Th that's just one of the, the few passions I have in TV was, was proselytizing for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, I'm now a big fan of that actor um, whose name escapes me oh, right Matthew now. Matthew Reese. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be on a Perry Mason yes. adaptation on I HBO. Can't wait. I saw it. So. Yeah. And yeah. apparently he I was just always look at him and think, uh, did you know he was up in the, Cat do you know he was up in the Catskills with his wife? And, and no child no. yeah or two children and they trapped know. up there in terms of uh, pandemic i don't know trapped the details i yeah. just know i read that he uh they they were up here yeah probably to get away from the city one would think mm. yeah is there a what do you miss about new york besides the apartment itself you know is there something mm. that you're just dying to, to do back in the city? Oh, it's not the apartment. That you right? wish was yeah. No, I, yeah. the apartment's in a very nice studio, but, uh, and it's in, it's in, uh, it's uptown. It's, it's, uh, in an area called Inwood, which, uh, people are hearing more and more about. I think it's at like 215th street, way at the top of Manhattan. So it's quite nice. It's mm -hmm. like, um, got some parks and it's very diverse and, um, un, un, gentrified so the very last podcast i recorded was in a, about 195th street mm -hmm. and it was be, i went for a nice walk before that because the, the guest wasn't ready yet and and yeah it, it was a lovely area a yeah. great neighborhood so. uh what i miss is just the city itself and the feeling of the city and the people and the diversity and the um activity and the that's it i mean it's, people ask me what i want to do when i get back to New York, it's not like I don't want to go to a museum or, uh, you know, the Strand or anything like that. I just want to walk around the city and watch people. Yeah. People watch. It's like it gives me a gives me energy. Yeah, 
I'm with you. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'd love to just sit down and record with somebody in person, but yeah, just being able to walk down the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Ugh, God. Yeah, anyway, we're, we're kicking ourselves or killing ourselves out here in the Right. In the woods. I, I can't uh, complain because it's really, we're lucky to be in the country. Yeah. Too. Now, with the live drawing and with, with, you know, getting reacquainted with paper, what do you feel you've gotten better at with that? Has any aspect of it and the the routine that you're doing now, et cetera, um, do you feel there are certain things you've gotten better at doing with this sort of drawing? Mm -hmm. Being nice to my husband? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, actually, this, this daily uh, live drawing that I'm doing is, uh, and, and the draw, live drawing in general for the last four or five years has, but it's it's sped up now. Okay, so here here's the thing. When I do the live drawing on my iPad, um, with a, with an iPad, for those of you who aren't, aren't drawers, uh, you can make a mark on your program and then immediately just erase it with one touch of a button, right? With pen and paper, you can't do that. So, but with both of them and the live drawing thing, I've learned to be more relaxed and draw immediately, not have to do any sketches to draw from. Um, so it's gotten me even looser with the pen and the paper. Ed Sorrell, I don't know if you know his, do you know Ed Sorrell? Uh, yeah. uh, we've corresponded and talked about getting together, but of course that was right before the pandemic. Yeah. So, He's a wonderful yeah. uh, political cartoonist, uh, cover artist for the New Yorker. He's uh, of a generation before me. He's in his nineties now, I think, or at least in his eighties. He lives in the upper upper side of Manhattan in Harlem, and um, he's he's been a friend for years. You know, when I was starting out, I really wanted to be at Sorrel. I wanted to take a class from him, and and he, uh, he and I was going to, but he he had to to uh, drop out of the class, and somebody else, Victor Joah has is that how you say his name? Taught it. I um, thought it maybe Yuhaj, but Yuhaj. I've never heard it said out loud. Yeah, just he, yeah. he taught it, but I didn't take it anyway. But I really wanted to be at Sorrel, and then and then over the years we met we met him and we became friend, friends with him. And he used to tell me, um, don't, don't use the light box. That's, you know, you, you, cause he, he doesn't use a light box. So light box, for those of you who don't know, it's a, it's a box. It's a flat rectangular box that has a light in it and it shines through a plexiglass, clear plexiglass top. And you, when you have a sketch, you put the sketch on the light box and then the good paper on top of the sketch. So the, the light shines through and, and gives you, the image on the good paper. So you can essentially trace from the sketch. But, um, and I, and I use, I've used it over the years, but I don't really, really trace closely. I use it as a guide, but Ed says, you just have to draw directly on the paper. It's that, that's the feeling that you really want. And I, he's right. You know, cause when I draw loosely, um, it's, it's straight from the head to the hand to the paper, you know, it's not, it, it's hard to describe, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah. I, and again, I, what I do with the show is it's not to imply that this is anything as creative as, as what you do when you make art, but the way I do the, the, the daily sessions now with the weekly ones, when I was recording in person, I would play them back and do this careful editing and write up all these notes and do this other stuff. That's all gone. Mm -hmm. and now the, there's the conversation and the next morning, I'll I'll clean up the audio just to make sure you know there's no fuzz in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, unless there's a segment that needs to be cut, the whole thing goes up. There is no playback. There's no, you know, uh, careful you know time spent. You know, just tweaking this little pause and that one. It's a much more raw conversation. But a, you know, it's the only way I could do this daily. B, you know, I've realized what things matter and what things don't matter. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's what you're getting at is you know you, you get that more direct authentic, relationship kind of authentic yeah. yeah yeah i think that's what people yeah. want to see so and here mm. i think that yeah we're sort of doing similar things aren't we i keep thinking maybe i'll have guests too because you can um and maybe i will down the road on instagram live you yeah. can uh you know invite some support in other people yeah is you, nice yeah i, I haven't yeah. done it but uh no, i did it. i'm sorry yeah. i did it as i was a guest on uh on somebody's instagram up Runner's World Instagram, I was a guest on there. So, 
uh, that would be the only thing I would check out because the only thing that's been keeping me sane besides the podcast is running every other day. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just six miles this morning through Great. an area of my town. And I've lived here 50 years and never actually circumnavigated this one lake. And I thought, I can do that and get back home in six miles. That'll be my, my morning thing um, because you get a little bored when it's the same I know. area again and again. That's where That's where podcasts come in. Yeah, I don't. I never listen to anything. Yeah. I'm convinced I will be the guy who gets run over uh, because oh. he didn't hear the car behind yeah. him. So, you know. But that's that's mm. me and my my many anxieties and worries. <laughs> now, <laughs> and trust me, the, the podcast is not long enough to list them all. So, uh, but I, I, was, I was wondering when you mentioned Ed, are you are you in touch during this whole period? Have you been in touch with with old friends? Have you been reaching out or or contacting a little, a little people? Bit. Just to, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit, not, not a lot, but some, yeah. I'm trying to think of any stories there now. Nah, it's, um, I did do, yeah, a, no, I, just, I did, if, if, yeah. if your listeners want to check it out, um, I did a, a, a zoom thing with the society of illustrators with, um, two friends, cartoonist friends, Roz Chast and Liana Fink, the three of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, the society approached me. This is a wonderful museum in New York. If you guys don't know yeah. it, um, where they have shows of, of illustration, but also cartoons and they have a lot of programs, a lot of fun things. It's a very lively place. Um, and they approached me and said, would you do a zoom with, with us? And I said, yeah, why don't I invite a couple of other cartoonists to, to join, join me. So the three of us just chatted for an hour about process, about uh, Roz's birds about, you know, Liana's <laughs> apartment and her. Yeah. So it was not planned in, in any way. It was the, the thing was planned, but not the conversation. And it was great. So that's, uh, you can find that on YouTube, but uh, th that okay. was fun to connect with them. And um, yeah. yeah, I've got to, I've got to hit up Roz to see about doing one of these at some point. I'm so. sure she'll love it. Yeah. She's very, yeah. or she'll put, she might put Jackie on instead and just have the bird chirp at me the whole time but you know <laughs> we'll see mm. so um last question i guess you know i know you haven't been able to read too much is there any sort of summer reading project you've thought of or or just a creative project beyond the the dailies that you're you're doing in terms of if i'm going to be stuck here you know i want to come out of this with x y or z done uh yeah, I uh, a couple of things. That's the other thing is having time. I yeah. I um I've dabbled in writing for a screen, uh, so nothing's happened with it, but I wrote I finished my first feature screenplay Congrats. and um so that's that. I have another idea to do as well. And um I'm working on a children's book and uh no, no publisher yet. So I'm working on a children's book. I've done nine children's books in the past, written and illustrated my own work. So it's a form that I like and feel comfortable with. And I also want to do a graphic narrative too. That's also on my list. Like a, I've done some short story graphic narratives, but I'm working on a longer one, a book length one. It's in the early mm -hmm. stages. Um, and then uh, I, I, I think I can tell you this, Gil, but I, I uh, got invited to, to have a show at the Norman Rockwell Museum. And um, oh. it's not, it, they haven't announced it yet, but they have said some things about it on social media. So I think it's okay to mention it. So that was, that's exciting. They, I've been working on that for about a month, organizing things, getting stuff out. And, and they came, you know where that is. It's up in uh, uh, Stockbridge, which is about an hour from here, Massachusetts. Oh. And they came we all wore masks and stood six feet apart and they, they took the, the work away. So my work is now over there. So that, that's exciting. Is there a, a uh, opening in July sometime? It, I'm not sure when. Yeah. I was going to ask it, given, given quarantine, given pandemic life, et cetera, mm. is it, you know, sort of an open ended, we hope this will open in July, but we're not sure. Or are they really committed? Regardless. I think it'll open regardless and uh, it'll be digital. We're doing, I'm doing a lot of things with them digitally. We haven't figured it out yet, yeah. but uh, I did it. I live drew. Oh, that's the other thing I'm doing. I live drew their cocktail party of their donors. That was interesting uh, via yeah. Zoom. That was fun. And I also live drew um, uh, via via a website, the ESPNW Summit. 
So they had a they had a virtual summit, and I live drew that. So adapting. <laughs> Yeah, have you figured out your best zoom angle yet? By the way, do, do you do you angle uh, the the laptop or anything to to get better light or, yeah, or you know, not up, shoot yeah. right up your nose? It's also my ceiling is really gross, but I try to make it so that it doesn't show the ceiling. <laughs> ceiling, but uh, it is kind of fun to. Did you see that one social media site that uh, was crit critiquing people's people's rooms? No, um, no, it was very it funny. So it's fun to watch what people have behind them and how poorly people think about it sometimes. Yeah, I, 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 my whole thing is, <laughs> yeah, the, the few I've done for business, it's down in my office, which is also my library. But where I sit, you don't really see the books. And I realize, oh, maybe I need to pivot everything around. And that way, it'll look, I'll look so much smarter yeah. by having all of these books <laughs> right. behind me because they already know something's wrong with me. So this, this would at least, you know. <laughs> Feel the deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. It's it's always a uh, it's always fun to see where people live and um and what they've got in yeah. their room. Yeah, that's again, like you said, we're all adapting in our mm -hmm. in our way. Uh, but I'll uh, put in the links for all this stuff and the the, the finale and the the show notes. Any uh, last words? Anything well, you want yeah, to say? To I want to say that um, adapt talking about adapting and and as cartoonists we we have to adapt to the new reality that's around us. Right. So I've done, as have many of my colleagues done lots and lots of pandemic cartoons, except for my husband, Michael Maslin. He didn't, he hasn't done any pandemic cartoons, um, mm -hmm. but that's just the way he is. That's, that's his kind of humor. But um, yeah. I've done a bunch. I've sold a bunch to the New Yorker because it's like, that's what's going on. And so we, we don't, I was talking to Roz about this. Like, when do we, when do we shift back? I mean, of course this, this, this turmoil in our country is racial turmoil is, is what we're focused on now. And I'm drawing about that, but. But that could be a lot anymore. more difficult. Yeah. The, 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 that could be a more difficult subject to. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. You can't for the New Yorker. You can't really, at least in yeah. the magazine, it's not something that you do, do a cartoon about. Right. And even, even the language of it, like I was writing to a, a black guest about doing one of these uh, a couple of days ago and every word i wrote i had to sit there you know am i framing this in the wrong way if i say protests and police violence does that mean one thing is it you know implying looting blah 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 you know it was just one mm. of those hypersensitive things so trying to do that with an illustration or or a gag panel well that's yeah. why I, these live drawings are, are touch on the subject but they don't they're not what I'm doing is like illustrating my thoughts or illustrating yeah. what's going on and uh, trying to do a drawing or cartoon about race as a white person is, is I just yeah. don't, I don't go there because it's not my, I mean, I can critique myself, uh, but um, I don't, you know, I'm privileged. So it's hard for me to. Comment Everything we do that. is asking for trouble. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but even when it came to doing coronavirus or or pandemic cartoons, was it difficult not doing the hoarding, toilet paper, hand washing? Yeah. You know the the, the standard set of topics. Uh, yeah. You have to think quickly if you're going to do something like that, or hmm. uh, assuming they want something like that. Or um, look at the big picture. The, actually, the two of the drawings they printed during the pandemic were ones that were done before the pandemic. So they were very uh, on on that topic in a way, in a generalized way. But they were uh, they they did uh, they got a lot of likes on social media. But I was going to say something else about that. Um, yeah, the problem with the pandemic that I run into is that. Um, and everybody else does, I'm sure, is that their people are dying. And you yeah. you have to be careful because you, obviously you're not going to make a cartoon about that. So what you do is you focus on how everybody who's um, sequestered, how they're coping with it. Make fun of the stupid things that we're doing, like the COVID hair or the baking banana bread or um, – yeah. uh, The sourdough starters. Yeah. Right, right. All of those I've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's got to be. I mean, I read the New Yorker every week, and I I know it's it's a challenge to do this and tread that line and and still be funny in the the process. Mm -hmm. So well, not they're not always funny though. I mean, I I did a cartoon after nine eleven, and it 
they published it, but it wasn't funny. So it's yeah. possible to do a cartoon that's not funny. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm hip. You know. Yeah, no, I know <laughs> Trust you me. Are. Yeah. I've come up with, with many unfunny ideas too. So <laughs> right, anyway. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> Great to talk to you. And that was Liza Donnelly. Go check out her site, LizaDonnelly.com, to find out more about her cartoons, her books, her live drawing sessions, her TED Talk, her speaking engagements, and plenty more. That's L-I-Z-A-D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y.com. She's also on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope as Liza Donnelly, all one word. So you really ought to check out her live drawing videos. Uh, through Periscope and Instagram, and Twitter has links back to that stuff, as well as stories that she's following and other drawings that she makes. Uh, Periscope is periscope.tv, not .com, and there'll be links to all of this stuff in the show and episode notes. And the Norman Rockwell Museum is nrm.org, and there'll be info about Liza's exhibition there. And we'll be back tomorrow with another COVID check-in. Uh, visit vmspod.com and chimeraobscura.com slash vm to find a link to the COVID-19 sessions at both sites, which is all of these daily episodes. You can also subscribe to the Virtual Memory Show via iTunes, Spotify, or your podcatcher of choice to make sure you get every episode, including the 370 or so in-person ones I recorded back in the before time. Now, if you can spare anything, uh, and I'm talking about money and other resources, don't give it to me. Uh, go find the Patreons, GoFundMes, Kickstarters, Indiegogos, tip jars, whatever, for the artists and writers you like and want to support. If you're not comfortable giving to individuals, there are plenty of worthwhile charities out there. Um, there's local food banks, which were being severely uh, overdrawn based on, on people's pandemic outbreak zones, uh, but also in the period that we're in now with the protests and a lot of um, arrests that are happening for people who are peacefully protesting, there are a lot of bail funds that could use help like that Minneapolis Freedom Fund. So uh, give, that's all I'm saying. If if you can help people right now, if you're in that position, uh, then please help them. Now, I am Gil Roth. It is Monday, June 8th, 2020, and this was a bonus episode of my Virtual Memories Show podcast. Thanks for listening. Keep the conversation going, stay safe, and wash your damn hands. <laughs>